Miracles are a concept that might seem a bit of a stretch for we non-theists, we humanists, atheists, and those unlikely to believe in things that go beyond the laws of nature and into the supernatural. Where is divinity to be found? Yes, there are everyday things in the natural world that evoke awe and wonder. Sunsets, night skies, the ocean and other sights that help us not only enjoy beauty, but gain a sense of ultimacy. We can experience a sense of being before vastness that we cannot fully comprehend. Those don't necessarily feel miraculous to me. When I contemplate the miraculous in this world, I think about part of a story by Marjorie Williams. Perhaps you've heard it before. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his brown coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath. And most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger and by and by break their mainsprings and pass away. And he knew that they were only toys and would never turn into anything else. For nursery magic is very strange and wonderful. And only those playthings that are old and wise and experienced, like the skin horse, understand all about it. What is real? asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came in to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick-out handle? Real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you. Then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, By the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, said the rabbit, and then he wished he had not said it for he thought the skin horse might be sensitive. But the skin horse only smiled. The boy's uncle made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago. But once you are real, you can't become unreal again. It lasts for always. This story from the Velveteen Rabbit touches on a deep truth about how we operate in the world as human beings. We create a certain amount of our reality. We make things real through relationship and by layering experience over meaning on top of memory. We share and pass on this reality through the power of story. Of all the things we've done as a species, becoming storytellers may be our most amazing gift. I see stories as miraculous. We gather them over the course of our lives, and they form the core of who we are. Our identities are stories, part truth and part myth. When I say I am gay, that has meanings, real meaning in this world, and... Without the context we live in now, could be completely meaningless to people of the past or of the future. When we say we are Unitarian Universalists, 
we are entering into a narrative that began long ago and has been retold over time in many places by many people. Whether we were born UU or became so later in life, our religious identity is one of accepting a heritage we didn't make ourselves, one that exists outside of normal time and is bigger than any single person. Another source of miracle stories for many is the Bible, made up of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. There are stories that seem demonstrably miraculous. Red Sea's parting, curing blindness, walking on water, living for incredibly long spans of time, and God speaking from on high directly to the people. And there are miracles that seem to fit more into my personal understanding of them. One place is in the book of Judges, with stories less often taught in Sunday school or expanded upon in sermons. The book of Judges finds the Israelites struggling to maintain their singular group identity among many other groups of people. They are trying to establish themselves in a new land and losing touch with that core of who they are. The people chosen by a singular God and in relationship or covenant with only that deity and no other. The people who were alive for the events at Mount Sinai have died. Each tale of the judges goes something like this. The tribes of Israel are ruled by another people under harsh conditions. The people of Israel cry out to God for help. God responds with a leader, a deliverer, a judge, to help them know the way forward and to become free again from oppression, to govern themselves and live in peace for a time. Mostly, this leader, this judge, reminds the people who they are, of their values and their commitments to a particular history before they are lost in a sea of narratives of surrounding peoples and cultures. The Israelites are pulled back together as a singular people with a story of who they are going back in time beyond any living memories, and with a purpose and relationship to the ultimate, their God. Usually after a generation of peace, the people forget again. They break their promises to God and lose their way. Then the next judge comes forward to remind them. Within these passages, impossible things happen. Miraculous things happen. Things that allow the Israelites to survive. What I see as miraculous is not any individual event or character's actions, but rather the cycle of stories as a whole. They continue to remind the people over the course of generations about who they are. These stories also add to who the Jewish people are over time. Story creates as much as it reminds us of our heritage. The cycle of remembrance and retelling and adding new pieces has built us up over time. We are who we are through the stories we are taught and the experiences that add our own lines to the next chapter. The ancient stories and the modern ones we hear from others and the ones we write ourselves. That is where I see something happening that goes beyond the natural world and touches the divine. The stories themselves are the miracles because they make us who we are and help us to become what we can only imagine. To paraphrase a certain skin horse we heard from earlier, miracle stories don't happen all at once. They become miraculous. It takes time, but once stories create miracles, they last for always.